Hello and welcome back. I'm Barbara O'Neill. Today we're diving into an important topic, the pancreas. This small but mighty organ plays a huge role in our overall health, especially as we age. For those of us 40 and beyond, understanding the pancreas can help us maintain better health and prevent various conditions that may impact our quality of life. The pancreas, located behind your stomach, serves two main functions. It helps in digestion by producing enzymes that break down food, and it regulates blood sugar by producing hormones like insulin. These functions are crucial for our digestive health and energy levels. As we age, our pancreas may face challenges, leading to issues like diabetes, pancreatitis, or even pancreatic cancer. But don't worry. There are ways to support your pancreas and keep it functioning well. So join me as we discuss how diet, lifestyle choices, and regular checkups can make a big difference. Well, tonight we're gonna to be talking about your pancreas. Your pancreas lives under your uh, left rib, and your pancreas controls your blood glucose levels. And when the pancreas is not working well, then a person will possibly be diagnosed with a condition called diabetes. In Australia, there are about three, three or 400 new diabetics diagnosed every day. A lot of diabetes. And America, is it so in Bermuda? Yes. And as I've already looked at this week, the curse causeless does not come. That's Proverbs 22 verse two. There's always a reason. Even medicine acknowledges that diabetes is a lifestyle complaint or condition. In fact, in Hippocrates' writings, that's 400 years BC, there was no mention of diabetes. So what is causing diabetes? Now, most people are fairly, fairly aware that sugar's got a big contributing factor. Is that right? It certainly does. What I'd like to do, I'd like to go with the Proverbs 14 verse 6 that says knowledge is easy to him that understands. And I'd like to have a look at how the body deals with the glucose that gets into the blood. When we consume food, particularly carbohydrates, it is broken down into glucose, which enters our bloodstream. The pancreas plays a crucial role here by producing insulin a hormone that helps glucose enter the cells where it is used for energy. If the pancreas cannot produce enough insulin, or if the body's cells become resistant to insulin, glucose builds up in the blood, leading to high blood sugar levels. High sugar consumption can strain the pancreas and contribute to insulin resistance. However, it's not just sugar that's at fault. A diet high in refined carbohydrates, unhealthy fats and processed foods can also contribute to the development of diabetes. Additionally, lack of physical activity, stress and poor sleep patterns can all impact how our body processes glucose. Notice we've got the liver here, the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a, a reservoir for bile and that bile duct comes down connects with the neck of the pancreas and empties into the duodenum. It's an alkaline environment in the duodenum. And the enzyme that is released from your gallbladder, so I'll just do GB for gallbladder from the duodenum, is bile. And bile is an enzyme that breaks down long chain fatty acids, so this is your unsaturated fats. So a lot of those fats, the ve uh, vegetable fats, you know, found in your nuts and your seeds. From the du duodenum, the pancreas also releases some enzymes in there. And the pancreas releases pancreatic lipase. And pancreatic lipase does the final breakdown of the unsaturated fats. They're the long chain fatty acids. So bile starts it, pancreatic lipase finalizes it. 
the pancreas also releases pancreatic amylase. And remember, Tylen is a salivary amylase, so the amylase salivary, salivary amylase tylus starts the digestion, put on hold in the stomach, comes to the duodenum, and pancreatic amylase finalizes the starch digestion. What's also released in the pancreas is trypsin. And trypsin is the enzyme that finalizes protein digestion. So protein digestion is begun in the stomach and finalized in the duodenum under trypsin and chymotrypsin. So these are two enzymes that break down protein. I've got some good news, it's gonna get easier now. They're all the big words. <laughs> From this, students, what's the main organ of digestion? It's the pancreas. Mm-hmm. Most people think that all of their digestion happens in the stomach, but it is not true. Now, one of the great things about saturated fat, it does not need bile. It does not need pancreatic lipase because the breakdown began in the mouth. So people with liver, gallbladder problems, pancreatic problems, what's the best fat for them? Coconut. Yeah. Coconut. It's very easy to digest. The stomach initiates digestion. The pancreas plays a critical role in completing it. The pancreas not only ensures fats, proteins and starches are fully broken down, but also helps regulate blood sugar levels through insulin production. For those with liver, gallbladder or pancreatic issues, choosing fats that are easier on these organs can make a big difference. Coconut oil, for example, is not only a saturated fat, but also a good option because it's more readily digested and doesn't require bile for breakdown. This makes it a gentle choice for those needing to manage digestive health. So let's have a look at this pancreas. We're going to put our pancreas here. Here's pancreas. Now the pancreas, there's the big P, it releases insulin. And as I just showed you, insulin unlocks the door to get the glucose inside the cell. You see, when blood glucose levels are high, then high insulin's released. And what the insulin does is it gets the glucose out of the blood and into the energy pathway or storing here or storing as there. In fact, insulin's got a one set mind. I must store, I must store, I must store. So a lot of people with diabetes, you'll find they're carrying excess weight because what's their brain doing through the insulin? I must store. You see that? Now there's another hormone that the pancreas releases and it's glucagon. Now what insulin does, it gets the blood sugar level down as I've just shown you. But if blood glucose levels go too low, glucagon's released and it gets blood sugar levels up. So can you see the pancreas releases these two main hormones that are designed to keep that blood sugar as it should be. But what's happening on this high carbohydrate diet? Huge amounts of glucose are being released, come to the cell and something starts to develop. It's called insulin resistance. Have you heard of it? Basically the cell wall says, I'm sick of the side of you. Mm. I'm sick of the sight of you. So it starts to resist. It starts to resist. And the glucose is still in the blood. And the brain's going, oh dear, quick pancreas, more insulin, more insulin, more insulin. But what's the problem? It's not lack of insulin, it's actually insulin resistant. And so eventually the pancreas just says, oh, I'm done with this. 
I've had enough. I'm worn out. So it's not long after insulin resistance that diabetes happens. Diabetes mellitus simply means sugar in the urine. Because if the sugar glucose can't get into the blood, then it has to spill out into the urine. Can you see that? Do you know the first documented cases of diabetes mellitus was just before the Black Plague in London. And you know what this doctor discovered? That it was only his wealthy patients that it was happening to. Because it's only the wealthy that could afford to eat sugar. You see, what sugar does... Aha! We've got a red tonight. Yeah, you're still royal, but we're, we're red. <laughs> so blood glucose levels go up dramatically. Dramatically. When these go in. You see, high glucose demands high insulin. So what happens is, because so much insulin's released, where's blood glucose levels going now? Too low. This is called hypoglycemia. And what does the person do down there? Oh, we'll have a candy, we'll have a Mars bar, we'll have a cup of coffee with three teaspoons of sugar. Will that get it up? Oh, yes. <sighs> oh, no, we're too high. Stop the glucagon, release the insulin. <sighs> oh, no, we're too can you see what's happening here? Crisis, 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 crisis. We had the CEO of um, one of the big sugar mills in Australia come and do our program. He told me there's 15 teaspoons of sugar in one can of Coke. Do you know how much sugar cane is required for one teaspoon? About a metre. Have you ever eaten sugar cane? How long does it take to get through two inches? How long would it take to get through 15 metres? In other words, a can of Coke should take you about the time to drink as it, times, as it takes to eat 15 metres. Yeah. You see, where it's just overload. When the pancreas is constantly bombarded with high sugar levels, it has to produce more and more insulin to manage the glucose in the blood. Over time, this persistent demand can overwhelm the pancreas making it less effective at regulating blood sugar levels. This can contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes, where the body becomes less responsive to insulin or the pancreas can't keep up with the insulin demands. Managing blood sugar is crucial and it starts with a balanced diet. Incorporating more whole foods like vegetables, lean proteins and whole grains can help stabilize glucose levels and reduce the need for excess insulin production. Regular physical activity also plays a key role in maintaining insulin sensitivity and overall metabolic health. By understanding how the pancreas and insulin work together, we can make informed choices that support our long-term health and prevent complications related to diabetes. Do you know, caffeine causes the pancreas to release... It actually causes the pancreas to release glucagon. Because when a person has a cup of coffee, their body thinks there's a crisis. That's why you actually get a little bit of a lift. The body thinks there's a crisis. And so, and so in a crisis, it's got to have more glucose. So can you see that is released to release that, to give some more, some more glucose. So what happens is the pancreas gets this response and then it goes too high and then the insulin's released. I was, uh, my husband and I were having a holiday in a resort in Australia and we're down there for breakfast, having our breakfast and at the table just near me, there was a gentleman and his wife, they looked like they were in their 70s and they both had a bowl of cereal with milk and they opened a packet and put sugar all over the top 
And then they had a slice of white bread with margarine, because they want to be healthy, and jam. And just bef and a glass of orange juice and a cup of coffee. Now, is that a typical breakfast? And just before he began to eat, to eat, he opened a little black bag, got out a little injection, lifted up his shirt and injected himself. What, what's that? Insulin. Now, can I run over and say, stop, I know how you can overcome this. Can I do that? Sure. No, they probably call the police on me. <laughs> Harassment. <laughs> And they have no right to go to my table and say, you're eating too much pawpaw and pineapple there. Hmm? I just hope and pray that he might stumble across my lecture on YouTube called Decoding Diabetes. Hmm? See, the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. They don't know. And of course, if I say, all that's giving you diabetes, what's the next question? Well, what are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. because it's I see we we go to Fiji sometimes maybe we'll have a holiday there Fiji with their beautiful cassavas and coconuts all that beautiful food and you know what they've got in the restaurant uh, cereal bread because that's what all the Aussies want now there is a little tray of pawpaw and pineapple and after we've been there a few breakfasts they get bigger and bigger, because we just about eat it all. <laughs> so caffeine also must stop. Are you told this by the nutritionists, if you have diabetes? And why is that? Because they're drinking coffee. I used to be a psych nurse. They're all drinking it. So why come, how come they don't have mental illness or diabetes? Guess what? They do. <laughs> they do. Uh -huh. So, all of these things add to it. What about margarine? What margarine does, well, it, it's an altered fat and it begins blocking the receptor sites on the cell for insulin. In fact, margarine is so toxic, it's one molecular structure short of plastic. So if you're going to eat margarine, you should eat the container it comes in. <laughs> it's a saturated fat. If it was polyunsaturated, you'd open the lid and it'd all move, or be liquid. You see that? Caffeine is also a concern. Nutritionists often advise people with diabetes to avoid coffee. During my time as a psychiatric nurse, I saw many people drinking coffee. And while they did have mental health issues, diabetes was not always among them. All these factors contribute to overall health. Margarine is another issue. It's an altered fat that can block the receptor sites on cells for insulin. In fact, margarine is so chemically altered that it is only one molecular structure away from being plastic. If you're going to eat margarine, you might as well eat the container it comes in. Margarine is a saturated fat. If it were polyunsaturated, it would remain liquid. Teaching people about these health risks and encouraging better dietary choices can make a significant difference in managing and preventing diabetes. I often suggest swapping margarine for healthier fats like olive oil or avocado, which support better cellular function. Thank you so much for joining me today as we explored the fascinating world of the pancreas and its crucial role in our health. I hope you found this information helpful and enlightening. Remember, maintaining a healthy pancreas is essential for our overall well-being, especially as we age. Simple lifestyle changes such as a balanced diet, regular exercise and staying hydrated can make a significant difference. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more health tips and insights. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below.